video I'm going to show you how to implement Google Maps into your DGLX5 application. So what I have is the start of my application. Uh, what I need to do is uh, insert a map into my project. So I'm just going to right click to insert components Google Map into my group and I'm just going to full size it. And the first thing that I want to do is style my Google Map. I don't want the default <laughs> styling of Google Maps so um, I'm actually going to go in their advanced with my Google Maps selected and I'm going to search for map to see the uh, unique properties of the Google Map component and I'm going to insert a, uh, a new style for my map under map styles and there's actually a pretty cool website called snazzy maps that has a bunch of styles that you can uh, throw into your DGLX5 application under the map style. There are several that have been made by other designers. Uh, you can create your own. Um, check out the website uh, to wander around and, and uh, see what other styles that you like. Uh, for this application of mine, I'm going to use this Shades of Gray. And I'm just going to left click and choose Copy. It copies to my clipboard. and I'm just going to expand this and copy paste and click apply. And that quickly and easily I have my Google Map styled. So pretty cool. Now I have a modern map with my modern application. Cool. So next thing I need to do is I need to start um, putting some location uh, nodes or points on my map. Uh, I'm going to say that I have a shop and I have shops in Oakland, San Francisco, Daly City. Now, there's a property called a repeater under the Google Map component, and it needs uh, a symbol, it needs a table of data, and then it needs a latitude and longitude field to define the latitude and longitude of, of our shop locations. So, by default, the Google Map gives you some play data. You can click on table to see the play data that's available. Uh, in my case, I want to do a little bit more, so I'm actually just going to use a CSV parser to start kind of playing around and showing you uh, sort of the possibilities of, of what we can show on Google Map. So I'm going to expand this, and I'm going to do name, latitude, longitude, pick. It's going to be the path of my store uh, picture for each of my locations. Cisco, Oakland. And lastly, we need to bring the paths of our pictures. So I'm going to browse for the, in my assets where my store locations are. And I'm going to bring my store one over to San Francisco because that's the picture of my San Francisco location. Store two over to Oakland and store three over to Daly City. I'm going to click apply and I'm going to see what the table looks like. So looks just about right except I want to enable my width header location latitude longitude and pick to be the names of my columns. So I'm going to set my width header to true. Check that out again. Okay, looks good. So the next thing that we can do is just bind this table of data to the repeater section uh, where it needs data because by default it's, it's null, it doesn't have data. So we can left click here and just make sure that it assumes that table of data, which it does. And we also need a latitude and longitude field. So this just needs, I mean, your column name could be something else. Um, it could be lat long, as long as it has the latitude and longitude coordinates. So uh, I did title my latitude and longitude field this way. Go ahead and hit enter. And last thing that it needs is a symbol to start plotting that on your Google Map. So uh, we need a symbol. Uh, right now we don't have a symbol for our location. Uh, in my situation, what I have built out, I just have my menu button uh, as a symbol. So let's go ahead and create a symbol for our locations. I have a shop icon that I'm going to use. Make sure it goes inside the group. 
and let's see where it's hiding. So I'm going to expand position and size, and I'm just going to center it. So we can see it, and I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. Great, so let's just convert this to a symbol. I'm going to call it S for shop. And I can go ahead and delete it. Once we make it into a symbol, it's going to show up in our symbols panel here. So we can delete it from our outline, select our Google map, and just give this map the symbol now. So now we have plotted our shop locations. Now I want to take this a step further. I want to give our locations a callout, and I want to give it a custom callout for that matter. So that when I click on this location, it gives me the callout, and I can click an X on the callout to close it. So let's go ahead and create a callout. Uh, let's go ahead and insert a group. And kind of start styling it. I want it to be this shape. Let's give it background color. I'm going to give it a little bit of an effect so that way it pops. Actually, by default, that looks pretty good. Uh, I'm going to go back over to my layout and I'm going to set it to a horizontal layout. And I'm going to insert an image because it's going to assume the pick paths that I put in my uh, table of data. And I'm also going to throw in another group. So right now, it kind of looks a little bit weird. So uh, it's set to a horizontal layout. Let's go ahead and select image. And I'm going to go down to the position and size. I'm going to reset the height. And the reason why it assumes basically the amount of the parent group is because if we select the parent group and we scroll up to horizontal layout, the vertical alignment is set to stretch. So when we reset the height, it's going to stretch and basically say, take up the rest of the space. So let's go ahead and do the same for this other group that we're going to add. And let's go ahead and reset these as well and give them a flex grow of one. Let's go ahead and give this image an image so we can see about how we want this to look. And I want the name of this location to be on there and a close button. So I'm going to make this group that we created a vertical layout and I'm going to throw in two text components. And I'm going to say that this is going to be my close button so I'm just going to put an X and maybe bold that and change the background color to something like that. I'm going to change my text to say location just as default text. And let's actually change this font size to like 11. So I'll say that this is what I want my callout to look like. We can actually select both these components in here and allow them to grow and take up the rest of the amount of that space and group that it's in. Okay, so that's not too bad for, uh, for a call out. So you can add as many things as you want on here. You can add a click action that says details. You can add more metrics, um, but for this sort of short use case, uh, we'll keep it simple. So let's go ahead and right click and convert this to a symbol. The reason why we're converting it to a symbol is because a callout needs a symbol. So I'm going to call this C for callout and make sure that it's in my symbols panel. 
see if a call out is there, great. And I'm going to go ahead and delete this. And I'm going to, there are two ways that you can go and edit this symbol. You can either double click on the stage um, within your application, double click where the symbol is to go into inline editing, or you can go to the symbols panel and you can right click and choose edit symbol. I like inline editing, so I'm just going to double click on the stage and go right to it. This allows you to go right inside the symbol. So you need to go inside the symbol and give it that callout symbol that we just made. So I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to give it a custom event. So I'm going to choose events. You can do a mouse over event if you want, or you can just leave it static. But like I said at the beginning of the video, I kind of want to give it custom on click of this event. Uh, click of this location, bring it up, and then when we close that, uh, click on that X, it closes the callout. So C is the name of that callout, and I'm going to position this. That looks about right. So now there are two in this custom events callout uh, section. We can. Uh, define what how we want to show this this callout and how we want to hide the callout. So this is going to be our next step. So with your your symbol still selected, let's kind of scroll back up and click on actions. And I'm going to just expand, click this expand button to see our list of events. I'm going to left at double click where this blue dot is to bring up my on click event, and I'm going to scroll down. And I'm just going to bind this to the show trigger. So I can say that on a click, show that call out. Let's double click on the stage to see that. Great. So next thing we need to do is we need to hide uh, that call out. Right now, if we click on the X, nothing's going to happen because we haven't created a behavior that will allow it to do so. So let's double click on the stage. And I'm also going to double click on this callout. Now I'm going to set up this callout by giving it some simple parameters. Now there are a few simple parameters that we need for this callout. Uh, we're going to need to pass the image path that we created in that table of data. That needs to pass through this, this main symbol through to this callout. So uh, we'll kind of, I'll, I'll explain that in a little bit. But for now, I know I need to create a, a string path to assume that path of uh, for that picture. I need to also create another string. Let's go ahead and do it as I'm talking about it. Go up to modify edit properties. So we'll call this string image path. I'm going to bring out another string that's going to be uh, final location, which is going to be either San Francisco, Oakland, or Daly City. And lastly, I need a trigger. And this trigger is going to pass the on-click event of this callout uh, to the outside, so that way we can hide this callout, right? So we need to bind this string to the image path. We can give it a default image, so that way whenever we're using this callout, it assumes this image. And let's give it that default location name. And let's ex expand this and make sure that we bind this to the text where location will exist. Lastly, we need to select the X and on this on click, instead of binding to, we need to bind from the on click because we're going to pass this invoke action out and bind it to the, the hide trigger of this callout. So I think we're all set. Let's go ahead and double click. If we select this callout and click on properties, we'll see that those simple parameters have been created. And the first thing that I want to do is I want to left click, left double click to bring up the trigger, and I'm going to select our symbol. 
and pass that trigger out and through to the high trigger of this call out. So if we double click on the stage to exit out completely, we should be able to close each of these call-ups. So this is looking pretty awesome so far. Um, the last thing we need to do is we need to make each of these unique, right? So if we go back into our Google map, into that CSV parser, bring up that table, we need to pass each of the location names and the paths of these pictures to these callouts. And we created a symbol parameter on the callout, but we don't have it available to us sort of on the outside. That's because we didn't give symbol parameters for this location node, we just gave symbol parameters for the callout. So what we basically need to do is we need to repeat and give the same parameters that we gave to the callout. So that way we can pass from here through to this callout. So let's double click and let's go. We know we're in symbol editing mode because it's kind of grayed out on the stage. Go up to modify edit properties. Let's drag out two strings. All we need is the image path and we need the location pass through. I'm calling it pass through just so that way we kind of get what we're doing here. So this is the call out with those properties that we made. We need this image path to pass through and give this call out that, that uh, image. And we also need to do the same for location. We can give it placeholder for the time being. I'll call this pass through. And let's double click on the stage. So now the symbol render should have those symbol parameters, which it does. So let's go ahead and click on here so we can see that they're now listed as pass through. Let's go ahead and bring up the table of data one more time because all we need to do is sort of connect the dots. Make this a little bit smaller so we can see the name changes on each of those columns. So select the column name and that's going to be location and select the column name of picture and we see the pictures updating. So now we have a Google map with each of our locations and callouts that are all unique, giving the picture and the name of the location. That should do it. I hope that helps.